This show is a part of the podcast network of the Walled Garden Philosophical Society, an international community of philosophers and seekers dedicated to the pursuit of truth, wisdom, virtue, and the divine, wherever they may be found. To find out more, go to thewalledgarden.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Searching with Seneca. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be focusing on verse number six of Seneca's 13th letter on groundless fears. And I kind of skipped over this verse uh, in the previous couple of episodes because I think that I'd like to focus on it from a different angle, perhaps than uh, that which Seneca is kind of focusing on in this letter. It will still very much relate to what he is trying to get across here in this passage. But, uh, you know, when I read this, it it really resonated with me in terms of uh, uh, connecting it to a few things that I've been really uh, thinking about lately uh, in terms of philosophy and how to live a good life and things that I've been experiencing. And so I thought this is this is such a valuable lesson that it, you know it would be a perfect chance to discuss it uh, in relation to uh, to to what Seneca is saying here. So I'm going to read this for you, and he says the following: "Quote, do me a favor when men surround you and try to talk you into believing that you are unhappy, to consider not what you hear." but what you yourself feel, and to take counsel with your feelings and question yourself independently, because you know your own affairs better than anyone else does. End quote. So I absolutely love this passage, because what Seneca is essentially trying to say is, take some time to consult with yourself. Get to know who you are. Get to know your situation. How do you really feel in life? How do you really see the world? How do you perceive things? And most importantly, question, you know, are things really as bad as everybody's making them out to be? And that's a very, very important moment in your life when you realize that we spend so much time in the external world that it's almost as if we start to feel the way that everybody says that we should feel and the way that, you know, we start to see the world in the way that everybody says that we should see the world. But how often do you go within? You know, how often do you build that relationship with yourself and try to understand how you truly feel uh, about life? And and this is so important because more and more, especially in our technological age, I mean, we are we are living in the external world so much of our lives. And how often do we consult with ourselves? How often do we find ourselves in in moments of quiet meditation or or prayer or you know contemplation uh, about how we really feel about our situation and about life and uh, and about everything? And one of the reasons why I think that this is such a key insight from Seneca is because I've actually been practicing this over the past year in my life and watching what happens when I really go within and and try to gain a greater understanding of how I feel and how I perceive the world. And I would say that to the extent that I have been able to engage in this kind of introspection, you know, I, I have been able to build a much better relationship with myself where I, I don't immediately judge the feelings that I have. I don't immediately uh, judge, you know, or, or believe what people say about how I should feel or what I should do with my life. But rather, in those moments in life when I am unsure about something or when I'm hearing something from somebody else in terms of a report about my own life or what I should do, uh, I turn up the volume of my inner compass, you might think of it, and try to see which way it points. You know, how do I feel about this and how do I truly feel? And, and, and that has only been an amazing transformation for me. It's just been something that, you, you know, I, I, I never want to go back to a way of being where I didn't have this kind of connection with the way I feel and this understanding of the way I feel. And that's what Seneca is saying here is don't believe all the outside reports, you know, go back within yourself and ask yourself, how do you feel about this? Because you know your affairs better than anybody else. But I would actually add something to this because I've been trying to uh, use this kind of principle with my my clients lately as well uh, in my coaching practice. And, and it's been a great transformation for many people just focusing more on how they actually feel about life and and, and the direction that they really want to go deep down, not, not the, the direction that they want to force themselves to go, but the direction that they are being pulled, uh, you, you know, by their own nature. And, uh, you know, one thing that I often try to tell 
people at the start, you know, when we're trying to develop this kind of relationship with ourselves is I say, you might want to start by recognizing that you don't quite know yourself. You are a very complicated creature and you do all kinds of things that you don't, you don't have any idea why you do them, right? And so first you start out by recognizing, maybe I don't know myself to the degree that I could, but I would like to know myself and I would like to develop a deeper sense of connection with that internal compass. And then I suggest to them that, you know, why don't you go away and for a week, just watch yourself as if you don't know who you are. What do you do with your time? You know, where do you go? How do you spend your time? How do you spend your energy? You know, where does your energy flow to? And, and, and when you watch yourself like that, you know, as if you don't know yourself, then you gain some key insights into, you know, some of the deeper truths about who you are and which direction you're going in and what might be good for you. And I think that when you detach yourself and you say, well, look, maybe I don't quite know myself and maybe I'm, I'm actually somebody who needs to be understood rather than controlled, then you start watching yourself and paying attention to how you feel in a completely different way. You become a student of yourself rather than being somebody who is trying to, uh, in a tyrannical manner, force yourself in a certain direction. And so in a way, it's kind of all about, you know, bringing your focus, bringing your attention back to how you truly feel as opposed to what the external narrative is or, you know, as opposed to where you think you should be going. You know, you, you, want, you want to pay attention to that internal world and let it guide you, let it inform you. And I think that this is really, uh, you know, one thing that I take away from this idea that Seneca uh, uh, shares here. Um, you know, don't believe the, the stories that you're being told uh, by the people around you about whether or not you you are happy or living a good life. You know, consult with yourself, spend some time with yourself, understand yourself and see what you learn. You know, a classic example from my own life that I might give you just as a demonstration. Uh, uh, one thing that happened last year was obviously I left my, my job in the fitness industry. And so I was managing a gym. And one thing that I often joke about with people is I left the fitness industry and within the, the year after I left, I probably went to the gym maybe two or three times, you know, so I went from going every single day to almost not at all. Now I was going on walks and I'd climb mountains every so often, but I, I just got very busy and focused on a lot of other things, whether it was writing or creating music or doing the podcast and you know, often I would feel a little bit guilty. I'd think, you know, okay, I should get back to the gym. I was just in the industry, you know, and, and this is obviously going to be good for me. But then one day I decided to actually start consulting with myself. And I said, well, how do I actually feel? And I realized that I felt healthy. I felt fine. And, and I also felt like all the other stuff that I was doing in my life was giving me so much meaning that I was almost on a high, you know, I was just, I was feeling great about the direction that I was going and with the things that I was doing. And there was, there, there was no part of me that was thinking, I really need to get to the gym and do another workout, right? Uh, even though it would be a good thing for me to do, but I, I consulted with myself and realized that I actually feel great. I feel great in life and I'm happy going out for walks and climbing mountains every so often, but I'm also happy just sitting in my room doing the things that I'm doing because it's leading to a really meaningful life. And that's what, often what happens when you start consulting yourself. You you realize that so much of how you feel is has almost been perverted by uh, you know, the kind of external uh, narratives that, w that that play out in our lives and the things that we hear and the things that we read and the things that we learn, you know, when are you going to learn from yourself? When are you going to actually, you know, pay attention and, and, and focus on what's going on in your internal world? And so I guess I'll leave it there. And uh, I hope you think about this and, and, and really have a think about what I said earlier in, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of losing yourself momentarily in order to find the real self that lies beneath, you know. Like Marcus Aurelius said, there is a wellspring uh, bubbling up within us, uh, you know, that contains wisdom and, and deep knowledge and deep understanding if you're willing to, to go deep enough to find it. And uh, you know, to the extent that you are able to do that, I know that you will be uh, less likely to be coerced by the opinions of others and, and, and to instead uh, consult with yourself and to, to understand how you really feel about life and how you really see things. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you next time. <music>